The days of man are but as grass, for he flourisheth as a flower of the field. For as soon as the wind goeth over it, it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. For the merciful goodness of the Lord endureth for ever and ever upon them that fear him, even upon such as keep his covenant and think upon his commandments and do them. The Lord hath prepared his seat in heaven and his kingdom ruleth over all. For as much as it hath pleased Almighty God in his great mercy to take upon himself the soul of our sister, Catherine Earnshaw Linton, we therefore commit her body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to the eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. To change our vile body to be like unto his glorious body according to the mighty working whereby he is able to do all things unto himself. It seemed a long while to us all, the waiting for Mr. Earnshaw to return from Liverpool. He was expected by supper time of the third day, but it was long after dark, and we had long since tired of running down to the gate to look for him, and were sitting wearily by the fire with Mrs. Earnshaw, who would have had us all to bed had we not begged to be allowed to stay up, for the master had promised us all a present, a fiddle for Hindley, a riding whip for little Cathy, and some apples and pears for me, even though I was just the serving girl. I 
Kathy. Kathy, wake up. Your father's home. Your father? father. I was Did you get my fiddle? Oh, let me be a minute. Hold on, hold on. I feel as if I'd been torn to pieces. But did you, you know get it? My, my fiddle. <laughs> Show me. Patience. Father, did you get it? Patience. Let your father get his breath. You'll see everything soon enough. Two whole days I took coming here. The roads were that bad. Now, this isn't exactly what you've been expecting, but uh, I say it's a gift from God. from the devil. I'll not have gypsies in my house. He's not a gypsy. I don't care what it is, you get shot of it. Well, then let him starve. Why not? There's plenty more do. Hmm. What's so special about him that makes you so fine and tender? Nothing. Except I found him in Liverpool without a soul. No doubt to... found more besides. It's only to drag your doings back here. You're too clever for me, my heart. Yeah, you're not clever enough. What do you do, make him work? Aye, but no more than others. We lost a son, didn't we? Well, thanks be to God, we have another. He can be a brother to them. I've no doubt he is already. All right, Nelly. Get the lad washed and cleaned. Take him to sleep with the others. What's his name? His name? I call him Heathcliff after our first son. There's something of the same look about him. Get to bed. But it's broken. He's broken it. He's spoiled everything. Rotten little chippo. Just you mind your manners and stop that face and get to bed. Why did he have to break it? He didn't break it. Now get to bed. For what we have received this day, May the Lord God of hosts, creator of heaven and hell, before whose throne all men tremble and look pale, make us eternally grateful. And may we rejoice in thy bountiful goodness forever, Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, lad. I'm going to take Heathcliff with me to Gimmerton. We'll take the musket and see if we can't find some game on the way, eh? Can I come? Oh, maybe, maybe. Can I come? Joseph, you can bring me in some more of those turnips, Hello, Mr. Can I come? Kathy, child, not so much noise. Well, why don't you go with them? What is it? What's the matter? What's the matter? My love. Whatever happens, I, I know that nothing's going to, but I, I want you to remember. You're the son of this, this house. It's all got to come to you, everything, the land, everything. It's, Mother, it's yours. It, it's all got to come to you, not to, to... There's no need to talk that way to the boy. Neither of us is dead yet. You promise me that our son shall have what is his. You promise me you'll prefer no other. Never fear, Mary. The Lord watches over us. English shall get what is due to him. Maybe more besides. Come on, lad. Despite Cathy's increasing affection for Heathcliff, I could see from the start that his presence bred ill feeling in the family. Less than two years after his arrival at Wuthering Heights, Mrs. Earnshaw died, never having offered him a kindly word. Hindley, in his loneliness after her death, had special cause to resent the master's strange affection for the child, and soon came to regard his father more as an oppressor than as a friend. 
was the lad I've come to see you about. Hindley? What trouble has he been causing you? Why, none. His progress gives every cause for satisfaction. <laughs> Wish I could say the same for myself. Why are you always so hard on the lad? Yes. He gets no more than he deserves. I think he deserves rather more than he gets. He'll never amount to anything. He might if you let him go to college. College? A man needs an education these days. <laughs> a man needs to be a man. Go on, pour it out, pour it out. What are the costs of this uh, education nonsense? Hmm? 50 or 60 pounds. What? A year, that is. 50 pound a year? Only for a few years. It won't be wasted, I can assure you. It's a deal of hard-earned brass. Well, even my lessons aren't free. I don't begrudge you your few pennies, but 50 pound? Say 60. I'm sure if your dear wife was still alive, it's what she would have wished. I, it seemed, was the only one who regretted his departure. But in the years that followed, I took some comfort in the fact that the master became less irritable without Hindley there to provoke him. In the course of time, however, failing health left him an unhappy and peevish man. Nelly! Nelly! And so I attended the ailing master, while Cathy and Heathcliff, promising it seemed to grow up rude as savages, became more reckless every day. At this time they seemed to need for nothing but each other. So deep and close was their friendship. Can't you always be a good lass, Cathy? Why can't you always be a good man, Father? Oh, I didn't mean it. You mustn't be vexed. What though my parents frown and scold, still jockey I approve. The youth is handsome, free and bold, and pays me love for love. When father at jockey's age did just the same as he, my mother too, I dare him cage. It's just the same as me. It's just the same. Upstairs. Pray by themselves tonight. Night, Father. What's the matter? Come now. Don't fret. Father? What's the matter? Father?
Gently. <laughs> Your ribbon's loose. This is Frances, my wife. I'm Cathy. I know. This is Joseph, our chief hand. And Nellie. She'll look after you. When I'm dead, I think I'll come and haunt you as the sunset. <laughs> Perhaps not. I think I prefer to be the wind and the rain and beat you. It was better before, wasn't it? Before what? Hindley. You wouldn't ever leave here without telling me, would you? <gasps> Remember this? The elf stone. Remember how we swore always to be together? You mustn't ever leave me here. Serious, swear it on the stone. Heathcliff. I swear never to leave you. Or this place. this place. Unless you turn against me. And I swear always to be your friend and to love no other as you as long as I live. May we both be buried alive under the black rocks of Penniston Crag if we ever break this vow. From now on, I want you to eat in the kitchen. A 
And Joseph. Yes, Master. You can eat in the kitchen too. And you can both of you sleep in the rooms above. About what? The barn. My wife and I want the house to ourselves. Three places are enough. Yes, Master. Now that I'm back, Heathcliff will have to work for his keep if he wants to stay here. Feed him like the others. Work him just as hard. Right, Master. And Joseph, no favours. Father's dead now. Right, that's that then. Shall we eat? Come on. Yourself, then, which must be very difficult if you're tone deaf. She shouldn't be here in the first place. This must be the young Lascar that Earnshaw brought back from Liverpool. Shut your mouth or I'll rip your tongue out, you fat bastard! Get out of here! I'm not leaving here without her! <laughs>
Thank you. A delightful sermon as you Thank you. See you for dinner on Wednesday. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Bye. Kathy would like to stay with us a few days longer. I take it you'd have no objection. Oh, if she's not too much of a burden, Mrs. Linton. On the contrary. We should be delighted. So with the children. Frances tells me you've worked wonders with her over the past few weeks. Wait till you see her, Gilsley. Thanks to Mrs. Linton's devotion, she has the manners of a lady. And she will be treated as such on her return. I promise you'll have no further need to reproach us. Shake hands. That's permitted on special occasions. I didn't mean to laugh at you. It's just that you look so dirty. Come along. Shake hands. She's waiting. Shake hands! Ten years, and by God, you're gonna remember it. All of a sudden, I feel very hungry. Help, we must do something. You go in, quick. 
Oh, they're waiting for you. I can't. Look, I'll look after him. Go oh, on before I'm there's more right. trouble. I'm all right. Let me wash those cuts and put some oil on. I'm going to get him then. I don't care how long it takes. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to get him. You mustn't talk like that. No, what's done is done. Oh. We must learn to forgive each other. It's for God to punish the wicked. Oh, why should God have all the satisfaction? Damn what Dr. Kenneth says. Frances is right as rain. She'll be up and about in a week or so. I'll go up and see to her. Nelly. I, uh... I'll go up, but get her to promise not to talk. I, I can't hold her still, and Kenneth says she must be quiet. I am sorry. I don't get a damn how sorry you are. Be sure to look after him properly, Nelly. Give him plenty of warm milk and, and sugar. I love him like my own. Now, shush. You lie back. And you're not to chatter. The master won't see you. I promise I won't speak. But that doesn't mean to say I can't laugh at him. Oh, poor Hindley. He makes such a fuss, Nelly. Well, I've hardly said a word to him. And every time he's left me, he's cried. to make a journey, Master Hindley. I've never been 
Please, a look here. Uh, if we're going to play cards, yeah, we'll play cards. Come on, let's have a look. Where's my drink? Oh. 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 Take no notice of them. Take no notice of them. Wow! Hindley's just got to get those dreadful people out of this house. How can I invite anybody in here? There's no decent folk who'll come here now. Oh, it makes me feel so foolish at the Lintons. Everybody knows what's going on in here. <laughs> Don't be so stupid, girl. They didn't mean anything. Don't touch me. Oh, my father will have something to say to you. Hindley, how could you? He'll say now if he wants to go on working for me. He may not care to. And there's many others as feels the same. Why, you little... <laughs> Where the bloody hell do you think you're going? Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Edgar is a very foolish young man. Oh, Mama, really? If you'd seen how he's been moping the last few days. Isabella, you know that's just not true. Oh, yes, it is. Nonsense. And he hasn't eaten a thing. <laughs> I said to him the other day, why don't you ride over there? But would he? <laughs> Mama, really? What will Catherine think of me? What would you like me to think, Edgar? Where are you going? Nowhere. Well, what are you all dressed up for? Well, it may surprise you to know that some people not only wash every day, they dress like this all the time. You don't. Well, I do now. You going to Thrushcross Grange? Maybe, maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> you spent nearly all last week there. I never see you. Well, you can see me now. You know what I mean. Cathy. Don't go. Get your dirty hands off me. you and your captain. You'll be flogged if there's any more of this. Come, sir. Hindley.
And you keep a secret. Hence, if it's worth keeping. Edgar Linton has asked me to marry him. What did you say? I said yes. I see. Do you love him? Oh, of course I do. Why do you love him? I just do. He loves me too. And he's rich. We shall have maids, servants. I'll be the finest lady around here for miles. Well, if Edgar loves you and you love Edgar, you'll both be very happy. Hmm. I am happy now. But... But? Here and here I'm convinced I'm wrong. What do you think, Nelly? I'm not thinking anything. Oh, yes, you are. You're thinking, what about Heathcliff? What about Heathcliff? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Nelly. Nobody can marry Heathcliff. I, I mean, he's, he's a wild animal. It would be disaster. I mean, where would we go? What would we do? We'd be forced to live like beggars. It would be... Well, it would be degrading. What, what is it? What is it? What's the matter with you? It's Heathcliff. Outside the door. Could... You don't think he could have heard us? Why didn't you tell me? I just saw! Oh, me! Heathcliff! 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 Oh, Joseph, have you seen Heathcliff? Isn't he here? Oh. Go on. somewhere. If he is, he'll not be found unless he wants to be. Oh, we must find him. He couldn't really have heard us, could he? What does it matter if he did? Nelly, it's Heathcliff, I love, not Edgar. Don't you understand? Then why? Because it's the only chance I have to get Heathcliff away from Hindley. Then we'll both be free. You don't mean you take Edgar's money to... Of course! Why else do you think I'd marry Edgar? Oh, I know he loves me, and it'll be very nice to be his wife. And I love him too, but differently. Nellie, I don't just love Heathcliff. I am Heathcliff. All my thoughts, all my actions are for him. He's my only reason for living!
like a drone, right? She's not ill, is she? I don't want any more sickness in the house. Captain, what were you doing outside all night? He's been chasing after Lance, like usual. You went with Heathcliff, were you? I never saw him. Because if you were, he can pack his bags and get the hell out of here. I never saw him! Well, I don't care. I'm sick and tired of him in this house anyway. I was going to get rid of him. Well, you'll never have that pleasure because he's gone. <laughs> Fever, Nelly. Keep the others away and feed her own gruel away in water. Will you be coming back? We'll see. Screaming fit to bust. Well, if you can hear, why don't you go and see? I'll not set foot in there. That's woman's work. Then try some of it. The window stays shut. All right, you can sit with me then. Stand being shut in like this. Where is everybody? Those that aren't drunk are working. Why don't you come when I call you? I've got enough to do without running up and down stairs all day. You leave the door open and the one downstairs too. Lie still and think yourself lucky enough to be alive. All right, you let me die. All right, girl, where is she? Upstairs? Why, yes, ma'am, but Dr. Kenneth Follow says... me, Robert. Fine thing when I have to learn about this from the local alehouse. Which way? Come along, girl. Dr. Kenneth says... <laughs> the window's open. Why didn't you ask her? Catherine. Oh, Catherine, why didn't you send word or something? Oh, uh, Oscar. None of you should be here. Dr. Kenneth said you should be... Now, look, we're going to wrap you up warm, take you back to the Grange, where we can look after you properly. Edgar and Isabella will sit by you until you're better. Won't you, Edgar? Yes. Yes, of course. Well, now we'd better get you dressed. Well, go along, boy. Yes. Quiet. What are you thinking about? When I die, I should be buried here. Close to your mother and father. You won't come back. We'll try and make you happy. Oh, Catherine. You're away, then. I, I don't have to go to the Grange. Don't you change anything for me, girl. I'll be glad to see the back of you. 
I never want to see another woman in this house. Oh, you'll be better off away from here, the way things are. Go on, get out. Sleep. What are you reading? Oh, just law books. I feel there must be more to being a magistrate than just being born into the right family. Oh, Edgar. What is it? Thank you. Whatever for? Everything. Is it Heathcliff? I thought he'd gone. He has. He has, he has. Joseph! You look well enough. I am. I live here on my own now. Cathy? Married, Edgar. Long? A few months. Must have thought you weren't coming back. <laughs> <laughs> How's your son? something. Take her off. Sit down. You want hand? Oh, come on, sit down. She'll not run away. <laughs> what you playing? Brag. Right. Who's deal? Candles, ma'am. Certainly, ma'am. Yes, Nelly? Um, there's a person from Gimmerton to see you, ma'am. Oh. What do they want? Uh, well, he wouldn't say. Who is it, Nelly? Um, well, it's Heathcliff. Heathcliff? All right, there's no need to strangle me, for heaven's sake. He's only a runaway gypsy, after all. Well, I'll tell him to come up, shall I? What, here? Well, I can't sit in the kitchen. Nelly can set two tables then, one for you and Isabel, and the other for Heathcliff and me. Oh, oh don't be so silly. Well, would that please you? Or would you rather have me, have me stand at the kitchen door? Catherine, for heaven's sake. Nelly, hmm? go and fetch him up. Catherine. 
Thank you, Jenny. Catherine, be glad by all means, but please do not be absurd, especially in front of the servants. I'll behave. My wife has asked me to receive you as a friend. Would you care for some tea? That would give me great pleasure. Why don't you sit down? You seem to have found good fortune. In some respect. You look as if you've been abroad. Once or twice. I'd simply love to travel one day to London. It's a curious place. Was it difficult? It was a struggle. Leave it. It's like a dream. Three years you've been away and you've never even thought of me. A little more than you have thought of me. You're cruel. I fought through a bitter life since I last heard your voice. And you must forgive me. For I struggled only for you. Catherine. Catherine, unless we're to have cold tea, would you kindly pour it now? Mr. Heathcliff has a long ride tonight, wherever he may be lodging. Well, I'm thirsty. Mr. Earnshaw has offered me lodgings at the Heights. Hindley. He's a mind to win some money from me at cards.
all these years I've thought of you. In every cloud. In every tree. Even the air at night was you. Why did you stay away? How did you think that I would feel? How could I know? Why did you come back? Settle up with Hindley. And see me. And see me? Hmm? And maybe Edgar too. Why do you hate Because he married you. Yoo-hoo! Isabella! Yoo-hoo! Cassie! Cassie! Come away with me. What? Yoo-hoo! Come away with me! She may see us. I don't! Cassie! Cassie! We must go! Quick! For something else, then. What? Barn? The barn? You'll want it back tomorrow. All right. Who's got a piece of paper? I'll go. Isabella and I are out for a drive. We thought we'd pay you a visit. I haven't been here since I was married. Let's, let's go for a walk. Come on, Baby, I did it. Well, go across the bridge then. <laughs> when am I going to see you again? I don't know. Soon. It's very difficult. Edgar thinks that you're dangerous. <laughs> we'll just have to be careful for a while. Oh, let's go. Where to? Away. You wanted to yesterday. Let's go. Let's go now. No. Why not? I want you. I've got things to do. I want to be with you. No. That's <laughs> I'm looking for a Mr. Green. I hear you're a clever man with paper and money, Mr. Green. I manage what the law allows. What does the law say about these?
clumsily writ, but it's fair and square. Hmm. They say on shows got papers like these all over the county. Buy them for me, Mr. Green. All of them. I'd hate to see the place fall into the wrong hand. Why do you always serve me with cold tea? I'm sorry, ma'am. I'll change it. And from now on, even if I'm alone in the room, will you kindly shut the doors when you go out, please? You know very well I catch cold. And she lets the fires go out when you two aren't there. What is the matter with you today? Nothing. I think I'd better call a doctor. There's nothing wrong with me. You ought to go to bed. I won't go to bed. Why should I? Just because you don't like me, you want me out of the way, don't you? Always picking on me, making fun of me. Thank you, Nelly. Since when? For weeks. There's been nothing but trouble and argument since that damned Heathcliff came back. It's nothing to do with him. He's kind, at least. Why pick on him? He's done nothing to you. He stopped coming here again. Oh, that's right. We can never see anybody, can we? Do what you like the pair of you. Have you finished, sir? I doubt it. Heathcliff kind. <laughs> He'd crush you like a sparrow's egg. Since when have I been picking on you? Well, since he came back. I know you want me out of the way. Every time we go for a walk, you're always planning something. I just thought you and Edgar didn't like to be with us. Don't you tell me how I should feel! Isabella! You don't mean that you're in... Me. You love it. Uh, oh, someone will see. Uh, 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 sweet breath. Uh. Uh, oh, he's clear. Oh, sweet, precious. Oh, darling. Do you fancy a tumble then? What's that? And you want it here or in bed? Oh! You beast! He's the matter. Him and Miss Isabella kissing and cuddling. I thought I told you to leave Isabella alone. Yes, you did. Did you start it or did she? What is it to you? I'm not your husband. You needn't be jealous of me. I'm not jealous. You can do what you like with her, but don't think Edgar's going to let you into the house. I don't give a damn about your little Edgar. I do what I want. Oh, no, you don't. You do what I want. Nelly, could you get out of the room? I've got something to say to you. No, I've got something to say to you! Look, I want you to understand that I know how I've been treated. And if you flatter yourself that you deceived me, or that I didn't know it, then you're a fool. <laughs> I went through hell for you. And if you think it's only me that's going to suffer, then you'd better think again. 
Why me? What have I done to you? Oh, it's not you. It's not you. Isn't it? Take Isabella. Hurt Edgar. Destroy me. Ellie, what was all that shouting about? That was Miss Cathy and Mr Heathcliff, sir. Cathy and Heathcliff? In the kitchen, sir. It's been and took hold of Miss Isabella. Sir. What? Yes, bold as brass. It took hold of her. If I thought you really wanted me to marry Isabella, I'd cut my throat. Where have you been? Listening at the door? There are many doubts about your birth, sir, but you were certainly not born a gentleman. It was foolish of me to expect you to behave like one. If you're not out of this house within three minutes, I intend to throw you out. Edgar, you're not worth the trouble of knocking down. All right, Nelly, get the men. If you can't throw him out yourself, apologize or take a beating. Catherine. Damn you, Catherine. I compliment you on your taste, Catherine. Robert! For God's sake! I'm not going to run with his fist in my gullet! Isabella to keep out of my way. I'm going to bed. Why? I tell Edgar I'm ill. But you're not. Nelly, you better help me or I'll make myself ill. Oh, you wicked girl. Oh, what do you keep saying that for? Oh, why should I be the only one to suffer? I'm going to give them both something to cry about. Catherine. Don't go. I haven't come to argue. I haven't come to apologise. Then it would be better if you said nothing at all. I put your supper outside. I said... Isabella, I warn you, if you are insane enough to encourage his attentions, you'll lose every penny you have in this house, and with it, my love and protection. Oh, I'm no worse off without that. Then you could go to him empty-handed. At least I'll give him something you've not known.
days now, sir. She hasn't had any food or a drop to drink. Well, shall I get Robert to force the door? What, and damage it? I know. She'll come out soon enough. You lasted. I'm burning, Nelly. I'm, I'm burning. <gasps> With child. Mm. Four or five months gone. Didn't you know? Well, uh, no. I mean, <laughs> no, I didn't. What is this? Is marvelous. Have you heard? Yes. Well, go and find Miss Isabella. We must all be friends again. There's been some talk of uh, Isabella and Heathcliff. But that's all finished now. It's quite. Finished. You're either going to lose her or the child, or maybe lose both. Well, I mean, is there nothing you could do? All we can do is to keep her in bed, and she must stay there till the spring. Meantime, keep her happy, keep her calm. No upsets, no arguments. First spring flowers from the height. Has the snow almost gone? Well, almost. Still a patch or two on the high ground. Oh, they remind me of the south wind and the moors. Do you remember how it was last year when you asked me to marry you? I wish we could go back and start again. I'd love to be free. To be up there where the wind blows. To run again. You will. Joseph, what have you heard? Will you help me, please? I have better things to do. 
been sick. She's up now. No more? With child. Seven months. And how's Edgar taken that? He's waiting to see the color of its eyes. I think your guy. He's black then. Can you tell me where the maid is, please? The maid? Yes. I'd like to be shown my room. <laughs> You're the maid, girl. You'll have to find it yourself. Well, how can I find it when I don't know where it is? Don't whine, for God's sake, girl. East Cliff's room up the stairs, second on the right. And make sure you bolt the door. And lock it. Why? Because sooner or later, he's going to get this. But why? I've signed away half this house. And he's won the rest. I mean to get it back. And his money. And then I'll get it. Him. Suppose I tell him. Tell him? You can watch over him while he's asleep. Sweet dreams. Can I have a word with you, sir? What is it? They're back, sir. I've had a note from Miss Isabella. She's dreadful unhappy, sir. And begs forgiveness. There's nothing to forgive. Won't you just write her a little note, sir? Just to say... You may go and see her if you wish. And you may tell him that if he ever sets foot here again, I'll have him shot down. Hello, Nelly. It's all right, Nellie. You can give her the note. Uh, there's no secrets between us. I don't have a note. Your brother sends his love, ma'am. But says that it's impossible to speak to you or ever see you again. I'm sorry. Sit down, Nellie. I want you to do me a favor. as if you were the ones to be pitied. I shall not pity you. You killed me. I've grown stronger for it, I think. God, I wish I could hold you till we were both dead. Will you forget me? Will you be happy when I'm gone? 
You know you lie to say that I've killed you. I could as soon forget you as my life. Are you not satisfied that I'm in hell already? Is that not enough for your damn selfishness? Don't be angry. It's worse to remember than my harsh words. How I'm loved. It's not my Heathcliff. I shall love mine yet and take him with me. He's in my soul. I shall soon be dead. Why did you do it? You loved me. Nothing in this world could have put us apart, but you, of your own will, did it. I have not broken your heart. You have. If I've done wrong, I'm dying for it. That's enough. Forgive me, I forgive you. How can I? How can I? Quick, I've seen the prisoner's carriage. Cathy, I must go. No, no, you must not. Oh, for heaven's sake. I must, Cathy. No, oh, for God's no, no. sake, don't listen to her. Just no, you here. He can't hurt us now. He can't. Come I'll not be far away. Before we're all done for. Come on. I'll be back soon. Honey, he's dead. Where's he?
May you not rest while I am living. Do not leave me. <laughs> Hammering as if you were master here already. Are you game? Or are you soft as your brother?